Scott, as I had noted to you before, I grew up in a family that's mostly medical and been a, either a first aider or, or an EMT since actually before I uh, graduated high school. So when I see medical applications for airplanes, my heart goes pity pat because airplanes mean life in an industry that's so time critical. But when you can couple that with something that's economical and run, and run in and out of just about any runway in the country, you got my attention. How do you convert a Mustang to air ambulance use? Well, it's a fairly straightforward modification. We've worked very closely with Spectrum Aeromed to develop a stretcher base that fits in the footprint to where two seats would typically go in the aircraft on the right-hand side. They come in and out with pit pins, so it's a very quick conversion. We do an electrical modification of the aircraft to put in wiring for power, and we have a special folding flat seat that uh, precipitates the installation and the loading of the stretcher so that it goes in very quickly and smoothly. The whole modification uh, is done turnkey by Cessna uh, and can be uh, accommodated with the total package of the aircraft. So it's a very, uh, very smooth and very easy conversion. Once the system is in the airplane, it also is very easy to convert back and forth from, say, a Part 135 operator to Medevac very easily. Again, those quick pit pins come in and out. You can uh, convert back and forth in less than 30 minutes. So it works very well for the operator that's doing multi-missions to be able to do his charter work as well as be able to respond to Medevac as well. Well, that's a lot of bang for the buck, isn't it? It, it truly is. At the price point of the Mustang and the value of the system and being able to multitask with it, we think it's really at a price point that the, the industry will uh, appreciate and move to it. Also because of the Mustang's very low operating costs, of course a brand new airplane, new warranty, I think the operator can uh, make a very strong financial case in going after the business and the, working with the insurance companies and so forth to provide a very beneficial platform, a new aircraft, a safe aircraft, get the benefit of jet speed, again, as you mentioned, speed is life in this industry, and uh, be able to be very competitive and very safe in doing it. Freedom through innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there. Now, Scott, what other uh, systems are available in addition to the stretcher? What kind of medical support equipment can be installed with this conversion? It's really a function of what the uh, what the operator and the medical team want to do. I mean, it, it's going to be kind of patient specific as far as the injury and what they're going to be supporting. So it, there's the ability to plug electrical equipment into the spectrum stretcher base and power up various monitors, defibrillators, things of that nature. So, but it'll it'll always be specific to that patient and that type of transfer that they're doing. So there's the ability to bring that on for whatever you need. Again, with the Mustang, you're not talking long-range recovery. You're typically talking 800, 900 nautical miles, so you're maybe talking a couple hours flight, uh, two hours, two and a half, something like that. So you will probably see more uh, ambulatory work with this aircraft. The patient's typically going to be stabilized, so you're basically transporting them from one hospital or one location to a more advanced hospital. So the medical equipment probably won't be as, as uh, extensive as it might be on some other operations. Indeed. Now, what kind of engineering talent did it take to put this together? This is not something you throw together in a day, obviously. No, we've been working on it for some time with, uh, with Spectrum. And the key to the whole thing is the, the fold-flat seat that we had to design. Because of the way the load ramp works here and loading the stretcher in through the door, we had to be able to make the radius of that curve and so the seat was in the way on the standard airplane. So we developed a new seat that folds flat. We did a complete seat certification testing on it, uh, sled testing uh, all the loads and so forth, and have been able to complete that here in the last week, and we're ready to uh, sell it to the field now. And that was really the pivot point of the whole thing. The rest of it, the electrical wiring was very straightforward. It's just some inverted inverters and Spectrum uh, has uh, the stretcher in a modular form to where the base unit uh, is unique to the aircraft. The next part of the module has the oxygen, the inverters, all of the uh, electrical and so forth of the system and that can be moved from airplane to airplane with a different base unit. So it, one system could be used in multiple airplanes with a different base. Have you had a chance to do any real-world deployments with this yet? We have not yet. Our first customer will be taking delivery of this air, uh, not this aircraft, but another one like this uh, next month, and they'll be getting uh, medical operations late next month or into December. So we have not done an actual medical flight yet, but I anticipate that'll be very soon. So what's the perfect mission for uh, an air ambulance-equipped Mustang? What's, what's a real-world average? I would say the airplane would shine very well in a, a typical 
say, 400 to 800 nautical mile range trip where you're transporting a patient from, uh, say, a remote area to an advanced care hospital, I think this would work very well, be very price competitive against uh, other older aircraft uh, where their operating costs are so much higher. Uh, the benefit of this is the low acquisition point and the low operating costs. And of course, a brand new aircraft is new right. warranty and it's much more economical to fly. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Now, are there any issues with the aircraft? Are there any CG changes or anything to note? Not really. The, the system comes, uh, comes into the footprint where those two seats were. You're, you're putting the system in and taking those seats out. So the net effect is about another, oh, say, 120 to 140 pounds over the standard aircraft. But you're only putting one person where you would normally have put two. So the typical range profile in the aircraft is almost a wash uh, uh, when you put the medical equipment in it. So it's, it, it doesn't impact the aircraft in a negative way. Now, what kind of operator may be attracted to this particular type of uh, configuration? Well, I think those operators that are, as I mentioned, operating uh, older aircraft where their operating costs are very high, the, the uh, medical uh, evac business, uh, as I've learned in talking with the operators, is, uh, is, is a bit cutthroat. It's, it's very price sensitive. A bit cutthroat? <laughs> There's a reason why scalpels are sharp, guy. <laughs> That's true. And, and the, the folks that are going to be successful are going to be the ones that can offer the lowest price for the service. Again, with the low operating cost of the aircraft, uh, this kind of an aircraft, I think, can undercut a lot of operators that are operating older aircraft and, and dealing with those uh, higher operating costs that they're passing on to their customers. This way they can offer a lower service, lower price for their service, attract more business and be uh, financially viable for them. Interesting. What kind of investment is it going to take to configure this aircraft? Uh, the entire turnkey uh, conversion from a standard airplane to the, the full uh, medical kit is about 103000 so with the price of the aircraft at, at roughly about three million, you're talking about roughly 3.1 to be in a brand new aircraft. Well, 100,000 in the air ambulance game barely gets you through the door these days. <laughs> well, that's that's true in a lot of cases. That's right. I, I know some helo operations that have just put that to shame. Oh. You know, it just it's just amazing how much cost goes into this, and with such a versatile airframe, it, that yeah, you got yourself a winner here. Outstanding. Thank you. Very good. Now, uh, at this point, uh, do you have any inkling about? Uh, what the market's going to look like for a project like this? The attraction to it, I think where we're going to get the uh, the biggest push is those operators, again, coming out of those older aircraft where the operating costs are so, so tough for them, seeing that, being able to come into the market and offer that new service, new aircraft at a much lower cost, I think the first ones to get on board that bus are going to be the industry leaders. The ones that do that will be the ones who will be controlling the market eventually. So, uh, you know, we're working with a number of customers to uh, to try to push that idea and that concept, and they're, they're being very receptive to it. So I think those early adapters are the ones that are really going to benefit from it.